please subscribe to Face TV Africa and turn the notification on. Face TV Africa, enjoy and subscribe. Subscribe and hit it. Face TV. Uswobi. We cannot build each other up. How do we build the economy? How do you think it's on your eyes? It's basic morality. So please recite the words of the ancient mythology. The way the mind is pressed is first of apology. Do you realize the Negroes are hunting commodity? Look around you, nigga, observe your ecology. See, they gon' try to tell you it's in your biology. They gon' tell you niggas ain't good with technology. That's why we have to rewrite our anthropology until they acknowledge me, nigga, follow me into knowledge. You know? This first verse, I wrote it like, like a conversation to a child. Say, recite this, always say it over and over to yourself. Nobody loves you. They're always gonna try to put you down. Remember, remember. Until we hate racism, more than the Igbo man hates the Yoruba man, more than the woke Nigeria hates the Fulani Hertz man, nothing's gonna change. It was the learning process for you to understand that. And then this, this the next, world. sorry, I'm talking over the music. Yes. But this next part, okay, I'm sure you can turn it down a little bit, turn that music a little bit. This next part, as I, I finished pouring out my heart, oh, the injustice that's been done to me, oh, black child, you know, I've suffered. And then this white lady who I'm sitting across from, her name is Karen Solomon, such an amazing lady. And she says to me, she says, the worst thing that's done to you as a black man is the idea that you always have to be strong, that you always have to be the warrior, that you always have to go home and bring home the bacon. She says, that's the worst thing that's done to you. We need men's liberation to free you because you're just a person. You're weak and you're strong, you're vulnerable, you're tough. You're just a person. You know, and with that, do you know who you are? Take some time, meditate on you. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I don't want to even talk about it from a racism perspective. The question, do you know who you are? You know, the interesting thing is a lot of people never want to answer that question. Because sometimes you find out who you are and you don't like it. You're like, really? That's not how my voice sounds. I really don't sound like a 12-year-old one. But anyways, moving on. <laughs> so sometimes when you answer that question, you don't really know, you don't really love what the answer is. And I think um, I was impacted by the story you told of the man that was battling depression. And, would win. and so you're living a life, and if you don't like yourself, there's like nothing is going to make you happy. You're going to have all the bags in the world. You're going to have everything. So I really, really like the question, do you know who you are? And I think it's very important for everybody to really find out who they are and to sort of like who they are because a lot of things ride on that. And having said that, 
Did anybody really take this picture, please? I need this picture <laughs> for my mom. Thank you. I wanted to take from that because um, you, you get to a stage where you're asking yourself who you are, but when you were growing up, were you raised to understand who you are? So what did our parents do wrong for us to not be able to identify with who we actually are from the very beginning? Because I know of a lot of people from many different races who have grown up to be really strong and independent and understand who they are. There must have been something missing along the way. I think this is the perfect segue to go to the next song. Uh, yeah, is that cool? Emotionally sad, I don't know what's wrong. You be mad, wait till they worry you, stand up now. Ah, wait till they worry, why are they soft like this? That's what we've been raised to be like. And it's great you're having that conversation. So what moved you to really touch on that topic in the song? Yeah, I mean, great question. Thank you, sound guys. Um, <laughs> Look, I discovered recently that due to patriarchy, don't fight me, Paul, uh, <laughs> due to patriarchy, when most of, the, most of, uh, my experience was that when I arrived at university, most of the girls were better prepared for life and leave. Can you guys, I mean, Hi, my check, my check, my check. Why you might have been this game? No, just check. Yeah, um, yeah, good evening everybody, um, glad to be here, glad to be on stage with, you know, one of my favorite rappers in the world, um, all true, facts. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, this is an amazing song, it's an amazing project, we're still going to talk about it, um, no pun intended. Um, I really want to focus on this question is, when did you experience racial bias and racial oppression? And when did you have the first awakening of who you are? Does somebody have a story that they want to share? I don't know, I feel like, I don't want it to just be my story. Does somebody have a story they want to share about the first moment where you were like, damn, I'm a nigga. <laughs> Anyone? Kaya, do any story? You have a story? Is it going to be a good story? Cause you, okay. So, um, I go to this hotel, go into the pool, I'm more the thing, right? So, um, I was on a date with this babe, her dad called her at night, like, she has to go. And then, her house is actually very close to the house. So, I expected, I expected that she was going to, I don't know, switch off her phone, and then, I apologized to her dad when she gets off. But she, guys, she decided to go, so I was pissed off. I decided, okay, you know, let me go, let me go to the hotel, because I know there are these hostesses come there to smoke. No, they don't come there to smoke. They come there to pass the night, but like they hang out. So far, we're very worried where this story is going. I understand. I understand. I understand. Okay. You, you, know, you heard the question, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so no, okay. no, okay. So okay. this, this happened, right? Because this is all happening in Nigeria, first of all. Yeah. 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 So I get, I get. All the microphones have the same. Mix, please, as that one. So I get, I get there, I see a white guy, and I'm like, okay, I need a cigarette, he gives me. As soon as I'm going, the security guy, a Nigerian man like me, stops me and says, what makes you think you have the right to take cigarettes from a white man? Negroes in the place, there are people from other races here, and the conversation is in no man, it's a conversation in love, right? Anyway, but I was in France with a friend of mine, and I won't tell you her name today, but I'll ask her next time if I can share her name. And she was explaining to me what happened. So this was a visceral moment for me. She was explaining to me what happened when she was growing up. And she said when she was going to school, people used to spit at the car, and they would throw rocks at the car. And I said to her, I said, wow, you mean they don't like black people here? And she turned to me and she said, am I? They don't like black people anywhere. And it was the most profound, earth-shattering, heart-wrenching statement, you know. Um, I think the most important thing is, what do we think about ourselves? How do we value ourselves? I think that's the real question. And I think that Nigeria has an important role to play because during the systemic mental breakdown of black people across the world, we were spared a little bit of that, like, 
you know. And so inherently, Nigerians have the most just self confidence now of maybe any black person anywhere in the world. Yeah, true. But sometimes we use it, we look down on people. You see people in South Africa say, why are they men like this? Why are they acting like this? I think that we have to understand as a country that we are leaders and our part of our role to black people across the world is to build, you know, is to build and to lead and to, and to you know. Let me comment on uh, what you said as regards well self-confidence. Yeah. Can every other microphone sound like that? Okay. So, um, last year was in Istanbul and I think the, what the impression a lot of people have about Turkey or Istanbul is that, oh my god, it's a Muslim society, they're really racist and all of that. But there was something I was telling you, I don't know if it was um, last time we saw it. I didn't experience racism there. I met people, black people, that had experienced racism there. But I stayed like, what, four, five, six months in Istanbul and I didn't experience it. And I was telling them this, I said, there is something that is different about a person or a black person when you walk around the society and you have purpose. You have a purpose for being in that society. They look at you differently. These guys see you differently. You walk differently. Like you have a purpose for being there. If you don't have a purpose for being there, if you're in the States or in the UK or any place else, you kind of said, you, know, you walk dodgily, you know? You have to walk, it's good, you're not straight. But once you have purpose in, in any society, black, white, or anything, they will not treat you funny. Because believe me, I was in cases where, or scenarios where I could have been, you know, treated like a black man by the police and all of that. But because of the purpose I had, maybe I carried myself. That, you know, going back to what you said as regards confidence, I think my case was different. I don't know about anybody here. Can, can I step in there? Okay. Is black the only thing you are? That's my question. Is that all you are? So if we are projecting that we should represent who we are, no matter where we are, when we find ourselves, um, and try and work towards creating some semblance of racial equality, no matter what message we're putting out there, I think it's key that we find a way to ensure that people are not just being addressed as black. So what is it to be you? Who are you? Are you just a black man? So if you find out what you truly are doing on this earth, what you're here for, why you're in that country, why you're in that place, I have a feeling it should I don't know if it is for everyone, it should project away from you. I want to say something to what you said. Why can't it be on there? Why do I have to have purpose? Why do I have to have work? Like, why can't I just be? Why can't I just be a young guy that's just lost and confused? I've been treated like every other young guy that's lost and confused from a different race. Yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying and it sort of leads into the next song. But I guess the question is, why I gotta be, you know what I mean? Why do I have to have my, like, have purpose, and you know, I'm smart, I'm educated, I'm, I speak. It's like we search for validation always, consistently. And when we get validation, then we're like, see? That, that validates, you know what I mean? Given responsibilities, told to take care of their siblings. Here I am, I'm a guy, I know nothing about leadership. All of a sudden, I'm dating this girl who has more information, and she's telling me, what are, what are you doing? <laughs> like, are you, are you dumb? <laughs> like, what are you doing with your money? And I can hear that she's making sense, but the louder voice is that a woman shouldn't talk to me that way. You know what I mean? And if there's anything I've been going through over the last few years is to deconstruct all the things that unwittingly, because my parents didn't raise me to put women down, but the, we're three boys and we never did any work in the house. And my sister, who's not really like my, she's my cousin, but lived with us, did all the work, right? And now I can look back and say, I love my parents, but that's a terrible way to raise a boy, you know? It's a terrible first way that I saw that a woman, and I remember the first time I came back from the States, and I was having trouble with my girlfriend, and I asked my dad one day, I said, Daddy, as a, as a man in a relationship, when you people fight, who should listen to who? 
and I, this is my superhero dad. I expected him to just say, my son, we the Lion King of... My guy just looked depressed, man. <laughs> and he said, Emma, he said, he said, Jude, you know, you just have to allow these women to get their way. <laughs> but deconstruct everything. Your parents didn't have as much information as you have. So you need to, you know, break down some of those walls. And this idea that we're shaming feminists is mind-boggling. Do you know what the Do you know what the alternative is? The alternative is a society where women don't go to school, women can't drive, women can't get jobs, and any of those things that you see happening is as a result of some woman at some point who said women should have a right to do that. And that is what a feminist is. It is mind-boggling that because Christian as the example of Christianity is Christianity should no longer exist. It is a simple idea. Men and women should have the same opportunities and be given the freedom to chase the opportunities and grow. It's so simple. That's what it is. If you don't agree with that, your whole perspective is whack. Should we do the next song? I had a dream about a hummingbird. that I wanted to talk about was the concept of believing in yourself, especially in the age of the internet. You're, when you are constantly trying to meet the expectations of someone else, you make it just float to the opening and go. Hummingbird, ignore all these mockingbirds talking and gossiping about you all day. Haven't done nothing with their own lives anyway. is about the idea that a lot of us are sitting in a cage with the door open and we're complaining if somebody just if only please subscribe to face tv africa and turn the notification on face tv africa and your subscribe subscribe face tv